Uli, we're just a few days out from the Puntjestown Festival now. It's been a hell of a season for you. Yes, um, an extraordinary season considering the start of the season. Um, you know, our summer horses coming into the, the autumn were winning well into the autumn. And then our winter horses, we were trying to get them ready, but it was so dry, I think it was a record um, dry November, December. Uh, November anyhow. And um, so we were on the back foot all the time with all the lovely horses. You're afraid to gallop them because, you know, if you race them, if you gallop them and get them ready, you're inclined to race them then. And uh, so we just had to put them to one side, wait for the rain to come. The rain came late. Uh, and then we got all the horses ready for Christmas and it, it Christmas worked you know we had a fabulous Christmas but you're going to Christmas with a sort of a, a hole in your stomach thinking if these don't win if they if we misfire over Christmas we're really way back and you know I thought we were back anyhow on numbers and, and winners and um, Christmas worked and then we we were lucky enough, uh, carefully selected, won the Tayeste. So we had a we had a lovely. It, the season just rolled on then into Leperstown and Dublin Racing Festival, and um, then on to Cheltenham. Uh, you know we had Cheltenham was good. Um, I thought a lot of ex people expected us to have more than six winners, but we were very happy when you, when you have a, a champion chase, a Gold Cup, Triumph Hurdle, Arkle. You know we had real quality winners and lots of placed horses. Cheltenham is a tough place. And then um, on to uh, Fairy House, which was spectacular. You know, I never dreamt anything like that could happen. And um, Paul giving I am Maximus a jockey's ride for the first circuit, that didn't work. And then his horsemanship took over. Uh, it was extraordinary to watch him and, and watching him and I'm thinking, his body language is good. This horse must be giving him a feel uh, because he hasn't pulled him up. You know, Paul knows if, if horses are not going somewhere, you may as well pull them up, uh, especially in big races like that, where you can maybe come back to fight another day. And the fact that he wasn't pulling up told me that this horse was giving him, still giving Paul a feel, even though he was so far out, but they'd gone a good gallop. The rain had come. He knew that the ones in front would come back. Uh, you know, how far would they come back? But he kept playing his hand. He kept cajoling the horse and it worked. It was extraordinary to watch. I thought it was a, a horseman's ride, I thought. And was the ride that he gave Ian Maximus different to the ride he gave Gallop in the Champ in the Chatham Gold Cup, do you think? Because they were both fantastic rides. Oh yeah, I mean, t total jockey's ride in the Gold Cup. Um, you know, we discussed it beforehand. We thought of that, you know, you're on the best horse, ride him like the best horse. I didn't want him to get involved in the race early on. Whereas in Fairy House, I did. <laughs> so I, I said, be up there. If horses aren't coming back, you know, the, on the previous races uh, on the card, yeah. nothing had come back from the front. But um, anyhow, they, I could see Paul on the first couple of fences in Fairy House going nowhere. But going back to Cheltenham, um, and, and maybe things didn't happen the right way for Paul in the first circuit in Cheltenham, but he didn't lose. You know, he was. He was obviously worried, but he didn't panic. He just sat, 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 and then going out in the second circuit said, right, now we have to move. And thankfully, any of the hard luck that happened in the race went by the side of him. You know, and you, when you're in that position, when a horse falls, you, you can get into traffic problems. But we got the rub of the green that day, and that happens. Some day you get it, some day you don't. We got it that day, and it worked out perfectly. And when I saw him, was it going through the third last, uh, or the third or fourth, third last, I think it was, and Paul had him back, collected, and balanced in about three strides. I said, wow, he's, he's confident. He just pulled them together in behind the others. And you can see Paul waiting, get around this bend, find a clear path, and let's hope we have enough in the tank. And that's the way it worked. You know, he was just, he's very cool when he needs to be. And this year, Willie, it looks like you've got a, a, a good, really strong team assembled again. Yeah. Gallop in the shop, I suppose he's your headline act again, the Gold Cup winner, the Chapman Gold Cup winner. Yeah. Um, we brought him to Fairy House last year for the what was the Ryanair uh, Gold Cup, the well warmer Gold Cup this year. But um, he is, he's come well out of Cheltenham. We're very happy with him. So uh, he goes there in good form. Yeah. And an Argumain champion chase winner coming on to point to stand again. Yeah, he, he's the same. He, uh, but he might have more competition. Um, 
from our own yard. I think we have um, Blue Lord, Shack and Purse, what gentleman to me in along with him, you know, so um, won't get everything his own way. Um, but, you know, it, so far so good. Uh, he's been good to good to himself this year, good to us. He was, he was very good at Chapel, wasn't he? Like he was, he was yeah. Yeah, well, we were, I wasn't too disappointed coming home from the previous meeting at Cheltenham, the one that was brought from Ascot to Cheltenham. Mm. We learned a valuable lesson there and we learned a couple of lessons there, maybe more. Uh, one about pace, one about the jumps and one about our tactics. And uh, it, it all came to play in at the festival and he was just awesome. And Artaviolo, speaking of awesome, he was brilliant in the Arkell at Cheltenham. Is he on track for Pontius as well? Yeah, another one that's in good shape going to Pontius So looking forward to him. He's got previous as well. He won the one there last year. Hurts. That's right. He, li he likes the track. And I love horses that like, you know, that have previous form. Horses for courses, as they say. Yeah. And um, Empire Pass? Another horse that looks really exciting. Uh, so he'll go there as well. Facile Vega will go there. Um, two, so you know the uh, we've a nice team of bumper horses that are going to go, and um, not sure we've any cross country horse, but we'll we'll find one somewhere maybe. <laughs> and is it the case that like do you have run run you intend to have runners in most races? Like is that the way you kind of plan out your punches down team and deciding on which races they're all going to go for? It is. We just you have to enter them in the different races that you think they're qualified for, and then as we get nearer. We see which we, which horse are working well, and then we try and divide them up as best we can to suit the horses, rather than the people. Because if you don't, you, you got to have the horse in the right race, you know. So uh, and then try and match up the right jockey with them. So Paul usually has the the pick of everything, and um, yeah, it, it 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 all comes together. We we don't have anything hard and fast except like Gallop and the Champ goes for the Gold Cup and Intercomine goes for the two mile you know there's, there's those races that those horses set themselves out in it actually comes together only the last couple of days or maybe even the last morning and then we have to make our decisions and they're made then rather than decisions made two or three weeks out yeah and is that on purpose you kind of leave it like that you kind of leave it flexible well, well you don't know you might have a horse that's capable of winning a two mile race but he could also win a two and a half mile race and if you have a what your favourite for the two mile race well you divert the other fellow maybe to the two and a half rather than have a, a sub you, you know so you'll, you'll train them in two races instead of one yeah. um, and then some jockeys might suit some horses and you swap them around but it's uh, you know between Patrick David Casey Ruby Walsh um, everyone has an input and then I, I get a, I, I get a word in sometimes <laughs> <laughs> they but they they have it all fairly well worked out before I get in but sometimes I get a casting vote yeah <laughs> and do you enjoy they, that they allow me in yeah I love I love I love yeah. I love listening to them all why that horse shouldn't go there why that jockey shouldn't ride him that owner won't be happy with that decision and the whole lot goes into the melting pot and it's pure theatre here <laughs> when we're doing it and that could that could take place over 15 minutes I'd say every morning doing declarations yeah and do you enjoy point of sound like oh I love it yeah I love it because um, you, you meet it's much more relaxed racing you meet everyone weather is usually good the track looks spectacular uh, you know it is one of the most spectacular tracks to see anywhere in the world and uh, I've been around a good few places and when you stand up there, if you ever go up there on walking Sunday, the Sunday before the race meeting, and stand at the top of the hill and look back down with the, the stands on your right, and the, f the course is laid out for the five days, it's just some feat of management to do that. You know, so they, they, they're just huge in Pontistan. And, you know, what is it, five days for hurdle tracks, five days for chase tracks? banks courses everything it's uh, and it's just to look at it take it all and say you know who planned this where uh, I think it's fantastic and then if you do it another day when there's racing going on uh, it's to me it's one of the best racetracks in the world